Good morning, good morning, everybody. Welcome to this brilliant Sunday. Uh, I hope that you guys have had a good morning so far. We're going to have an even better one because we get to praise our God. Can everyone stand and let's sing together? good my favorite was the kids dancing we need to praise more like the kids 
They're awesome. Such good dancing, guys. We love it. All right. It's all about God this morning. And let's give him all of the praise. And don't be afraid to look a little silly and to dance and to sit at the top of your lungs. Let him fill you with all of the joy this morning because he is good. Wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul, this bag of bones. I try with all my might, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting, this bag of bones. Just when I ran out of road, I met a man I didn't know, and he told me that I was not alone. Let's go, you pick me up, you turn me around, you place my feet on solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior, because he healed my heart, he changed my name. Thank God. And let's raise our voice this morning. So good. How good is the joy of the Lord? So good. All right, we've got one more. 
I'm going to take a deep breath. Cardio workout. <laughs> joy and all of our praise let us remember that he's right beside us that he would do anything to come after you again that he left the 99 just to find you to gather you in his arms and to just love you that he knows every hair on your head and he knew you before you were even in your mother's womb There's nothing that he wouldn't do for you. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, come in after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, come in after me. There's no shadow. overwhelm you. Let him just fill you to you overflow with his Holy Spirit, with the love that he has for you. Let that overflow run to the very tips of your fingers, the ends of your toes, the top of your head. Let that spill out so that you are a light this week and forevermore. The people look at you and they just go, there is a child that is loved by God. And oh, what a Savior! Isn't He wonderful? Sing hallelujah! Christ is risen. Oh, bow down before.
shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. over all our circumstances. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we have sung that. I I just pray that each of us this morning, through our own experience and the way in which you've revealed yourself on this planet throughout creation, that we would acknowledge here in this place this morning that greater you, Lord. There is none greater than you. 
We acknowledge you this morning, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, this morning, I thank you that you have brought people from the north, south, east, and west, that you've put people, Lord God, drawn people to watch online here this morning. And none of that is by accident. You're not here by accident this morning that there is a loving, caring God that through whatever means or ways possible, he has drawn you here today. And my prayer this morning, Father, is that every single person in this room, from the oldest to the youngest, from our walking through the preschools, our primary school, our youth, our young adults, uh, Father God, families, uh, individuals in this place, uh, grandparents, from the oldest to the youngest, Lord God, every single person would have their own personal encounter with you this morning, undeniably so that when we leave this place, we're not just talking about, gee, that was a great service, gee, the, the band did a great job, gee, there's a bunch of nice people, but oh my gosh, Jesus is the name on our lips this morning. And so it's all about you. So we honour you and we thank you for being here with us and we give you all the glory. Amen. Amen. Hey, welcome to church. Great to have you. It is good to have you here. Hey, before you sit down, why don't you give someone a high five and just say, gee, you're very good looking. Welcome. Welcome. Hey, great to have you in church this morning. We just want to take a minute to um, certainly welcome any visitors here with us today. So if you're here, you've been invited, or maybe you've just sort of uh, checked out Dr. Google and found a church in the local area and you're, you're here today, we just want to give you a very warm welcome. And we just have a little gift that we would love to give you. We've got a keep cup. It's got some information about us as a church and uh, there's some goodies inside there. There's also uh, just a little QR code that you can scan and find out more about us as a church and uh, how you can be connected or maybe have some of your questions answered. So if you're visiting with us this morning or you've never received one of our Keep Cups, our host team right now are at the ready, ready to come and run one at a rate of knots. Uh, so if you can just raise your hand, you're visiting with us this morning, we would love to give you this little gift. Put your hands up. There's some hands up down the back there. Come on, church, let's make our visitors feel welcome. So good to have you here with us today. Speaking of visitors, um, I don't consider Pastor Christian a, a visitor anymore. He's part of our church family, and he's got his two boys um, up the back, and they've got a few words they'd like to share this morning. Noah and Zach just want to come up and say a few words. No, just kidding. So that, that would kill me if I did that. So there you go. I just did it. Um, but no, um, it is great. And these guys have been here for a few days. So Pastor Christian um, hung out with the youth on Friday night and there was some great stuff happened on Friday night. And uh, I'll let Christian maybe share a bit of that if it, if it becomes uh, appropriate in the service. And then yesterday morning I had a time with, uh, with our leaders and uh, there was some great stuff that took place um, here yesterday morning. So we're so grateful to have Pastor Christian, um, Pastor C3 Noosa, uh, struggling for Jesus, obviously. <clears throat> but in all seriousness, we do need to pray uh, because there's just been more floods and torrential rain up that way. And so let's, uh, let's please be praying because obviously uh, that water flows to areas that are always, already been just so incredibly smashed. And, and, and uh, Christian, with a, a bunch of others, um, is we uh, sent $10,000 to these guys uh, to um, serve those who are in need. And uh, just amongst other things, we're able to just serve and help so many displaced people throughout Lismore, particularly. So a whole team went down and served in that. Christian may touch on that, may not, but... Just doing a great job up there in Noosa. Great church. If you ever, you know, sort of have to grin and bear it and go on holiday up there, um, go, and, go and visit their church because it, it's an absolute cranking church. So it's great to have you here, mate. And we're looking forward to what you've got to share. Hey, um, there's going to be some really cool stuff that happens in this meeting this morning. So if you're visiting with us, you've come on a great morning because we believe in a real, loving, caring God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And the, the Bible says that God is spirit and God is love. And His Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is a spirit of love. And we believe that God's Holy Spirit wants to come and interact and impact your life for the better. God only ever brings good things into our world. And uh, He's just wanting to reveal Himself in a way. So if you're here today and you're not sure about the whole God thing, then you are at a great service. Because I truly believe my prayer for you, some of you I haven't met, but my prayer for you has been that when you leave this place today without a shadow of doubt, you will know that God is real. And so uh, that, that's my prayer for you this morning. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. So what actually happens here this morning on Tuesday night, everyone say Tuesday night, right here in this space at 7 p.m. We have a team 
uh, of people that uh, love to listen to God and they work in that prophetic space and they hear from God and they share words with people um, just around, you know, God's direction or peace or wisdom or knowledge. Or, you know, for your life, it's just a real time of blessing. So from 7 to 7.30, if you'd like to have somebody pray with you uh, and maybe share what God is saying through them to you, then from 7 to 7.30, you can come and, and we'll have that set up here. And then from 7.30 through to 9 in this space, it's just going to be worship. What we just experienced here, as well as there'll be a creative space for people to paint or draw uh, as that's happening, or there's going to be a space where you can be prayed for if you need healing. Uh, and so this is just going to be a supernatural space, as we pray it always is. Uh, but certainly Tuesday night, we'd love to invite you to our Altitude Night. And uh, we just know that uh, it's just going to be a fantastic night. And in fact, the last one just went off big time. And so I'm going to say this, if you weren't here, you missed out. So don't miss out on Tuesday night. Um, so that's really cool. Another thing that is happening is uh, our youth are just going from strength to strength. And we just love what these guys are doing. A great youth team serving our uh, high school age in this church. And uh, I'm just going to get Liam to come up and just let us know what's happening next Friday night. This is Liam, everyone. Good morning, church. How are we doing? So as you see on the screen, we've got Youth Live Undivided this Friday night, which is super, super exciting. So we are going to take a bus from here at 6 p.m. We're going to head down to Barry Church of Christ and have a great Youth Live event. Thank you for promoting that, Phil. But So if you've got a young person, parents, then please, I encourage you to bring them along. It's five bucks. We'll have them along. It's going to be a great night. And hey, we'd love for your church to, to believe with Paris and I and believe with our youth ministry that we don't want to see any, see any spare seats on that bus. We want to fill that bus and have as many young people as we can come to this night because these are the type of nights that are incredibly powerful for our young people. And these can be life-changing, completely transforming nights. Hey, pray along with us, but it's going to be great. So thank you. Good work, mate. Thank you to our youth team. Um, we've had a, quite a few new people join Compass of, of late, which we're very grateful for. And we would love to meet you and hang out with you. So we run a course called DNA, which is where you can come over two nights and actually learn more about who we are as a church. And if you're looking for a church or sussing out Compass as your church home, then this is uh, the first course we would love for you to consider doing. And so we have this phrase called what's next. And so we love to see people growing in their relationship with God. And the first step in that in terms of getting grounded in a church is really important. And so our DNA nights are where you find out more about Compass, opportunity to hang out with some of our leaders and ask questions that you may have, and really kind of get that clear sense that this is my church home. And if it's not your church home, our commitment is we want to help you find a church home where you can flourish, thrive, give, serve, and all of that uh, because life is too short and uh, we, shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't be wasting our time or God's in that matter. So, you know, we'd love for you to get planted and, and grow. So there's a great opportunity. The details are on the screen behind me. And the last thing I'd love to do is just have an opportunity to give. Uh, and thank you again for everyone that just gives throughout the week. And post-COVID, uh, certainly all of that is done on the line, as we as we say, uh, and through the apps, etc. So those details are on the screen. And so that may be something that you uh, would like to do now uh, or you do during the week. And I'd just like to just pray and thank God for uh, his goodness to us and also for your generosity and faithful giving. Uh, and we'll just commit that to the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you that we are here this morning and, and I just thank you so much for your ongoing faithfulness and goodness, patience, kindness to us. And so, Lord, we as a people, um, the things that we have, the good things that we have, Father, the, the Bible says that are, are from you. And we just thank you for those things and the things that maybe we're struggling with or causing us grief or frustration or pain. You're, you're not removed from that. You wait for us to invite you into that so you would give us the peace. Maybe the circumstances don't change, but you want to change us so we can get through those things with a sense of joy and peace and strength. So, God, you, you are just across it. I just thank you that you take care of all of our business. And I just, Father, just want to commit all the faithful giving that has come in, that maybe even coming in right now, and just want to thank you and ask you to bless it. May it be used wisely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, didn't have this one down, but did anyone see the... I'm not promoting the project here, but I'm promoting a story on the project this week. Anyone see that? We're kind of Evolve Ministries uh, who are serving Ukrainian families. Um, the project did a story and you can, you can watch that on Catch Up TV and stuff. But it was just a great story about uh, Natalia and Andre Osipova, Evolve Ministries serving, which we're partnered with. And it was our space that was, was seen on the project. And what 
always thought was super cool, they wanted to use the kids' room and the graffiti on the wall says Jesus. But the guy just said, oh, that's got great colour to it. We should film here. And I just, just, I didn't say a word. I said, mate, that's a great idea. I like the colours too. The colours are great. So I was just like going, you know, she's going to get interviewed and in the background's going to have Jesus in graffiti, which all the old people wouldn't have a clue what that word says. But, you know, they, they blurred it out. But it doesn't matter. Jesus was in the background. So, you know, that was, they don't know that, but... Hey, we dropped Jesus in there. Um, so it was really cool. Check that out. But um, as mentioned, we're starting our Saturday night dinner service for Ukrainian families. We're not starting a Saturday night church service. We believe this is a better use of our resource and time as a church to get groups of 10 to 15 together once a fortnight to serve a meal to these families starting June the 4th. So particularly through our life groups, we're looking to get teams together through that, which we'll do. Uh, and so please stay posted, but there'll be other ways you can volunteer if you're not connected with a life group. Cool, that's enough from me. We're going to let our kids out right now. So if you have a walking through to preschool age, um, your, your child is going to be incredibly safe and have so much fun with my amazing wife and her team. Nat, so... The walking through the preschoolers go out through the left and please sign your child in and out at the end. So you go out the way. But primary school age kids are about to have so much fun with these guys, Ben and Anna. And Anna is incredibly responsible. She is amazing. Oh, so, so is Ben. So is Ben. But all primary school age kids, uh, you can make your way that way. But otherwise, if you're not a kid, you don't fit those age categories or parent, love for you to stand up. Encompass people. Go and meet somebody that you haven't seen or you don't know. Introduce yourself. Make them feel welcome. We'll be back in a minute. Alrighty. Hey, let's grab our seats. I want to give uh, Pastor Christian as much time as possible. And so, uh, as mentioned, Pastor Christian, Pastor C3 Noosa, along with his wonderful wife, Melissa, who was actually preaching up there this morning. And so they're, they're currently having a great service as well. But uh, Christian got three, three kids, got Noah, Ella and Zach. The two boys are here and we've... Uh, Managed to spend a little bit of time in the in the wave pool over the last couple of days, and got to say, his his boys can surf incredibly well. It's it's kind of um, so good just to watch them. It's just been great to hang out. My point is, is that like this is not just getting somebody in to try to. This this is actually somebody I believe that carries a a mantle. He carries an anointing. He carries a supernatural gift from God that is meant to actually encourage and edify and and strengthen the body of Christ. And he does that around the world, and, and Christian won't talk about himself in this manner, but he's asked to speak at various places around the world and things like that. And, and I'm just super grateful that we have this friendship. And I, I would like to say there's a real heart connection. 
and it's just um, out of that is, has flowed just, just such a great encouragement personally. He and Melissa have encouraged Nat and I personally over the last couple of years when we've been going through what we have and you just <coughs> need people to talk to. And this is one of the guys I'd ring and talk and, and just get that godly wisdom and encouragement from him. And, and I know you're going to experience that this morning. And so this morning, it's not just some rando we've decided to come in because he's apparently, you know, <laughs> looks good or... Well, maybe he's a bit rando. You, work, you, can, you can be the judge of that right for yourself. But uh, he, he's really a, has become a very dear and good friend of Nat and I, but our church. And so this morning, we're really blessed. And so can we please put our hands together for Pastor Christian. Fantastic. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Get sorted for one second. How you all doing? Good. You glad to be in church? Psalm 122 says, I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. And I think one of the smartest things you've done is turn up this morning in the house of God. We've worshipped, we've prayed, we've opened heaven. God is here. And what I love about the church is, is the church is the place where heaven meets earth and earth meets heaven. And, and in this place and in this space, anything can happen. So I want you to get ready and expectant this morning. Let's not limit God in what he could do in our lives. Amen? Amen. And honestly, God wants to meet with you this morning. It says in the word that if we draw near to God, that he will draw near to us. But the amazing thing is that, yes, he draws near to us, but he's also ever present. He's always with us. He's always near. And as we engage, we get to encounter. So I'm really excited. It is an absolute privilege to be here. Um, I hope you know what you've got in this church. Uh, and, and I, and I want to say this, and I say this, this is not a normal church. Uh, this is a church with life. This is a church with community and family. Uh, and your leaders, Phil's always very nice. I, I, what I've realized is I think Phil is the yin to my yang. Cause, and my wife tells me this, that that she's the details and I'm the headlines. And Phil's up here telling you all this stuff and I'm going, man, I couldn't even keep that in my head. But he's got the details and he's got the, the why and the how and he's telling you all this stuff. But they are, they're not only phenomenal people, they're, they're phenomenally dedicated, capable, uh, you know, excellent people that, that lead you and lead you so well and he was saying a few things about, you know, the last few years. And they've been, they've been funky, man, but they've been funky for all of us. So that's all good. Uh, but the way the, your leaders carry you in their hearts, the way they speak about you, the way he tells me I've been interceding and praying for my church, that they'd be strengthened and they'd be blessed and they'd be carried through this time. You need to know that, that God must really like you <laughs> to have given you the leaders that he's given you. And can I just, can, could we just... Thank your pastors this morning and honour them uh, for what they do, for what they carry, for the way they bless you. Uh, and can I just encourage you, the great, you, you've done it, you've turned up, but just support them, just get behind them. Uh, you know, you, you partnered with us, and I know it was, it was part of Phil's heart, and Nat's heart was uh, when we went down through the, the floods uh, to help out in the Northern Rivers region and Lismore and all of that. Phil just rings me randomly. He didn't even know that I'd already partnered with Convoy of Hope and Global Care, and we were taking a whole lot of resources and team down to Lismore to help. I think there was 3,800 houses that are now condemned. Most houses went under to the second story, under the roof, like the roof was underwater. Um, and, and Phil rings me and says, our church... Uh, wants to bless and partner with C3 Noosa, we're sending you $10,000. Uh, and you need to understand that part of your giving, that's what you did. You've helped people in, in Lismore and Woodburn and the Northern Rivers area. We were able to go there with like forty-five, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 worth of resourcing and then team. We're going back there again and again to help rebuild homes. But you were a part of that, so thank you. You're absolutely magnificent. And uh, again, please just support and love on your pastors. Like Phil said, we had a, an amazing time. Friday night was awesome. And there was a salvation at youth. And, and we got to pray. And, and I think it was Liam got healed, which is unreal. How good is it that God turns up and when God turns up, things happen? Yeah. And I'm going to preach in a minute here, so, so hang with me. But can I just read you this? Kathleen sent me a testimony. And, and I'm, I'm encouraged by this. But... Uh, I, I want to read it because I want to stir faith. I feel like God sent me here this morning to stir faith 
we're in a new day, we're in an exciting day, and God is going to move, but he can only ever move to the extent that we allow him to. And the way we allow God to move in our lives is to simply go to a position of faith, going, God, maybe I, I may not understand, but I choose to believe. I choose to just put myself in that where I believe. So the testimony is this. It says, a little update for Christian. Liam had a very painful back for two years, made much worse since his accident of a punctured kidney and broken knee bones in February. On Friday, he needed to leave class eight times during the day because of the severity of his pain. Last night, Christian put his hand directly on the spot, causing pain, even though Liam didn't tell him where the pain was. And before Christian prayed, he said, ask God if he is real. Then he prayed. This morning is the first time Liam has been completely pain-free. He has no pray, pain. All praise to God. So I, I, I want to say Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. Who knows, we've walked through changing times and seasons. Life doesn't look like it looked three years ago, but it's all good. And even though life has changed, God hasn't. He's still here. He's still present. He's still with us. He's still for you and not against you. He still says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That, that helps me. I, I need that. I need to be reminded of that all of the time. And uh, even yesterday in the leaders meeting, God just chose to move. We got to pray for a whole lot of people, and, and Warren told me, I hope you don't mind me saying this, Warren, um, he's desired to pray, to pray in, the, in tongues and be filled with the Spirit for like seven or eight years. And I did, I, you were in your seat, or we'd prayed, and, and God touched you, and then you went back to your seat, and as he was sitting in his seat, he just started speaking in tongues. So, so what he's desired, and what he was believing for, and what he wanted, God just gifted to him in a moment. And I say that to say this, I think that can happen this morning for you here. I believe this morning you can enter into breakthrough. I believe you can receive your miracle. I believe God can touch you. And so the title of my message this morning, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a two, two thing. It's, it's don't look back. Don't look back. It's easy to look back. It's easy to stand in the moment and look back at what's been and almost have that as the perspective we look forward uh, through to what is going to be. But, but I believe God's calling us by faith to be future focused. No, not looking to the past, not looking back, not worrying about what's been, but setting our eyes on the future, casting hope into the future for what God's going to do in our lives. And, and it, that, that very thing, that hope and that faith. So we need to sow seeds of faith this morning because the faith that we sow in God's ability is the very thing that's going to carry us towards the future that he has for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on. Let's get excited about the word of God this morning. And life is crazy, hey? Life, life, life it, it really, it is. I, I realized this morning, I've been a believer. This is the 30th year of me walking with Christ. So for 30 years, I, I've, I've been in, the ch in church. I've served in youth. I've kind of fulfilled every role there is to fulfill in, in church life. And, and, I, and I've loved every moment of it. And then we planted a church. But, but life is crazy. If three or four years ago, you had have asked me, do you, do you think this is what will happen? I wouldn't have told you this is what will have happened. But in saying that, that it's crazy, it's, it's also awesome. So life for me is all about perspective, how I look at what I'm walking through in the moment, knowing that God is with me. So as I said, it's important to sow faith towards our future. And I love what the prophet Jude says. He says, stir yourself in your most holy faith. Stir yourself. Stir, fan into flame, stoke up, do something to grow and develop your faith. The amazing thing I've, I've learned over these last 30 years is that faith leaks. I can be full of faith and full of vision and, and excited about life today and tomorrow something happens and my faith's leaked and there's almost like there's a deficit there. That, so I have to be continually stirring my faith. The way I stir my faith is to get into the presence of God and to get into the Word of God and to seek God. The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. It says, if you seek me, you'll find, for me, find me when you seek for me with all your heart. If there's deficit in your life right now, if there's answers that are needed, if you're requiring miracle or you're, you're looking for breakthrough, can I encourage you, seek the Lord. He's not, he's not afar off. He's not hiding. It's not this game of hide and seek. Where are you, Lord? He's waiting for you to cry out 
so we can hear your cry and answer your prayer. And uh, I'm excited. I just love the word of God. And in, in 2 Timothy, it says, that it, it says, all scripture is God breathed. And it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And I believe that we, the church, we, the people, have been created for this time in history to do good works and reflect Jesus in the earth. If the earth needs anything right now, it's not more religion. It's more Jesus. It, it, they, the, the world does not need religion. I shared with the leaders yesterday that I am convinced the world does not want to hear the church anymore. They want to see it. Tell me if what you believe is what you do and how you live. If you've got this faith, if you've got this great God, show me. Don't tell me. Show me by your life. Show me by your joy. Show me by your passion. Show me because you overcome and you get beyond and you live victorious and you choose not to be a victim. That, that's what I choose. I just choose. I'm not going to be a victim because I'm not. I, the Bible says that I have victory through Jesus Christ in life. Every single one of you here this morning sits in victory. It's just a choice whether I'm going to live in victory or live as a victim. Can I tell you, rise up, rise above, live beyond, look higher. Don't, don't look to what you're facing right now. Look to the God of the universe that spoke when there was nothing and created everything. Amen? Amen. Come on, help me preach this morning. Amen. Jeremiah 29, 11 says this. It says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. You'll call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you, to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek for me with all your heart. So as I say, sowing seeds into the future, when we sow our faith into God's ability, we reap his plans and purposes for our life. And God, the word tells us, always wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or imagine. So he's got plans, and but we've got desires in life, things that I want to do, things that I want to achieve. God's plans and purposes for your life are not only good, they exceed every dream you've ever carried in your life. Do you know that? God wants to do more for, for you than you even know that you want. And that, that amazes me. It amazes me because the, the, the opposite of that is the fact that we limit the life that we can live when we don't go to faith. And we're going to live in one of two camps in life, camp fear or camp faith. And you can't live in both. F fear and faith, they're, they're opponents. You can't be in fear and, and full of faith at the same time. So one has to overcome. One has to be greater in our lives. And again, we are the ones that stir the faith in our lives. So I just want to look at three ways to experience victory in life as we journey towards the future. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And, and then we're going to pray for some things. I already feel like God's told me about somebody's back that he's going to heal. And, and, and as I'm speaking, you're going to feel heat in your back. And it's going to be an indication that God has already started working on your life. There's somebody and you've got a twitch in your eye. And, and, you, and, it's, and it's a twitch and it's annoying, but it's also painful. There's somebody here and you've been getting migraines, really bad migraines. In fact, who is that? Who's, who's been getting really bad migraines? I'm going I'm to pray for a few people. Is that all right? Then we'll come back around the world. But if that's you, I'd love you to come forward again. I know we're in crazy times, so I'll only do what I'm allowed to do. Uh, but if that's you, would you just come forward? And maybe can I just get somebody on keys or something? And... Um, Who's been getting really bad migraines, bad headaches? That may even be the person with the eye that it, it affects you. So, yeah, would you just come forward? Can I pray for you, ma'am? What I love, and I say this all the time, is, is, is God knows what we need. And, and like Pastor Phil was saying, I, I've, I've been blessed because I get to travel all over the world, a little less in the last two years, but and see people healed, radically healed, blind eyes open, deaf ears open, people that were in wheelchairs standing and walking, people that had had strokes and, and been paralyzed, but set free in a moment because our God is a healer and our God is love. He loves us. So, so again, can I ask you to just be expectant this morning for what God could do? Thank you, Lord. So it's, it's headaches or is it your eye? Yes. And um, 
before that I did have headaches, which was uh, very unusual for me because I don't usually have headaches. Yeah. So. What is your name? Lynn. Lynn. Yeah. Would you just close your eyes and look away to God? Just stand there for a minute. You, you, you don't have to fall over. Sometimes, and I guess if it's all right, I'll explain. Sometimes you pray for people and they fall over. Sometimes they don't. It's, it's never about the falling over or the, the quaking, the shaking. And it's, it's about receiving from God. And I've expressed this before, but I think as the church, we've got really, really good at giving and being that blessing and meeting needs in the community. And, when, and, and we've got really good at serving, but individually, I don't know that we're that good at receiving. But the Bible says every good and perfect gift comes to us from our Father in heaven. You think you came to church this morning for whatever reason it is. But God has you here divinely this morning because He wants to give to you what you're needing. He wants to fill the gaps in your life. And I, and I just love that about God, that what I can't do, He empowers me to do. I can't live certain way except by the Holy Spirit and the power of God in my life. The Bible says, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in belief. God wants to fill you this morning with joy and peace. It does, he doesn't want this just to be a, I turned up to church, I, I ticked that box, I left and got about my week. He wants you empowered and filled this morning for the week ahead. So would you, wherever you are, whether you're, you're you know, listening, you've you got your eyes closed, you, you, would you just open yourself up in this moment to a touch from God? Somebody here, you've got a kidney problem. God's going to heal that this morning. There's somebody here and you've got a digestive issue. God's going to heal that this morning. And I am going to preach in a minute, but I, I, I kind of feel like God wants to do some things also. Would you just close your eyes? Father, I thank you for this woman. I thank you for her faith. I thank you, Lord, that you've got her here this morning. You've already told her you're going to heal her. And now she's stepped out by faith to receive that healing. Lord, touch her today. Your word says we lay our hands on the sick and they recover. So in Jesus' name, recover. Thank you, Lord. There it is. Just receive that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Again, is if, if you're visiting here, this is a little weird perhaps, but sometimes just, just the Spirit of God gets on people and it over, overwhelms them, it overcomes them, but God is working and doing what God does. Amen. So I know at the end of service, I'm going to, for any of those things that I've called out, we're going to pray for those. Somebody here with pain in the soles of your feet. Who's that? Yeah, just come forward, sir. I could kind of sit in that place, but I, uh, I know we have to bring the word this morning. Matthew 5 says this, you're the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out, trampled underfoot. You're the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp under a bowl and said they put it on a stand. And it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. I'm convinced that as we get future focused, as we sow faith towards the future, knowing that, the, that God's plans and purposes for our lives are, are for our good and not for evil, to, to bless us and not to harm us. And does anybody believe that this morning? Yeah. You, you, we got to keep reminding ourselves of, the, that, of, of what God's plans and purposes are so that I can walk through tough times and tough seasons moving forward with momentum and energy and excitement and passion. Don't get bogged down right now in the moment of either what feels like it's been stripped away or what I, I can't do anymore because I'm telling you, we're entering into a brand new day where God is going to open up and open wide what, what we can do and, and the church is going to be seen as the answer to society's problems. 
But I, I want to call us out this morning and I want to say, let our, let's let our good deeds be seen. Let's let our faith be lived out and let's glorify God through our lives. Amen? Because I can live a muted, subdued, half-baked life or I can just come alive and say, you know what? The joy of the Lord is my strength. God is with me. He's for me. He's not against me. I'm going to rise in this moment. You are the answer to somebody else's problems. You're the reason somebody doesn't take their life. You're the reason somebody makes wise decisions and doesn't enter into wrong relationships or, or form wrong, wrong habits in their life. You are the end because you're a carrier of Christ. Amen. You are somebody that is filled with the Spirit of God. You're the carrier of Christ and, and you are somebody else, somebody's answer. So again, I want to just talk very briefly this morning, three ways to experience victory in life and, as we journey towards the future. And the first one is this, is open your mouth. Can I encourage you, don't stay silent. Open your mouth, speak towards the future, sow words of faith, because faith speaks, it's not silent. The enemy wants you to, you to be silenced. The enemy wants you to not have a voice. And the amazing thing is through a, a time of isolation or separation or, or just watching you know, service on, online or something like that, it's, it's almost like we, we shut our mouths. But God wants it shouted from the mountaintops that he is God, he is king, he is Lord, he is the alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. And I want to encourage you, it says, speak into being that which is not as though it is. So, so why don't you start speaking towards your storm? Why don't you start speaking towards your... Jesus, when met by a storm, he's asleep in the boat. His disciples are freaking out. These are watermen that shouldn't be freaking out about a storm, which tells me that the storm might, must have been pretty savage. Pretty relentless. It was hitting them from all sides. You might feel like right now life is hitting you from all sides. That the wind is blowing, the, the waves are rising, that life is coming against you, the, the rain is beating down. Jesus simply woke up and said, quiet, be still. It's not that difficult. Why don't you speak to your storm this morning? Speak to your storm of brokenness or speak to your storm of hurt or speak to your, your storm of sickness and say, quiet, be still. By his stripes, I am healed. I've been delivered. I've been set free. I've, I've been raised up with Christ. Why don't you declare what will be so that tomorrow you can enjoy it? Don't stay silent. The Bible says, sing, O barren woman, you who have not born, for more are the children of the desolate than that of the married woman. In other words, when you start to sing, when you start to praise, when you start to glorify God, all things are possible. Because I've gone beyond circumstance. I've gone beyond woe is me. I've gone beyond victim. And I've said, you know what? My God is enough. My God is greater. My God can. I want to encourage you. This is a house of faith. Your pastors are, are, are a man and woman of faith that stand in that space and go, God, we don't have it in and of ourselves, but we know we have it because we have you. Can I encourage you? Let the miracles flow. Don't limit God by negativity or negative words or, or speaking about what was. Speak about what will be. And I love it in Genesis where it, it, it talks about the, the creation story. And it talks about, and God said, verse 4, and God said, verse 6, and God said, verse 9, and God said, let there be. And then it goes on to say, let us make man in our image. We created man in our image. And then God says, and it was good. We need to speak so that we can see Jesus said and then he saw you will see what you say so make sure you're speaking words of faith towards your future make for, for sure everything that you say is declaring what lines up with the word of God for your future and then you can say and then see and the the the, the sad thing is so many people say and then they see they speak negatively they speak against the word of God. They declare, I am sick. I am broken. I've been hurt. I've been harmed. I've been... You may have been, but become a sanctified liar. <laughs> Speak into being that which is not as though it is. Let the weak say, I am strong. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Just start speaking towards what you want to see happen in your life. Is this helping anybody? God said, and then he saw. Do you realize that you and I have the same creative ability in our mouths that God had in his? 
When God spoke and ho- as he hovered over nothing and created everything that we enjoy today, we have that same ability because we've been made in his image, filled with his spirit, called to his purposes to go and have dominion in the earth. Speak towards your future. Don't stay silent. Don't let the enemy rob you of the plans and purposes that God has for your life by staying silent. Find your prayer voice. Get to that place and declare what will be. What we, what we say is what we will see. And I, you know what? I want to I declare, I want to see, and I want to say it is good. Yeah. Amen. The second thing is this. Lift up your eyes. When you're walking, a natural default in life is when I walk through a challenging time, I drop my head. And it's like, man, everything's coming against me. The walls are closing in. Life is limited. Life is small. Can I encourage you? Lift up your eyes. It says in Psalm 121, I lift my eyes to the hills to where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord. Can I encourage somebody here this morning? Your, your, Your help doesn't come in your strength. Your help doesn't come in your intellect. Your help won't come just from your friends. Your help will come from the Lord. Firstly, go to God. Firstly, lift your eyes. I'm facing a tough time. I'm challenged at the moment. I feel like I'm being battered around. So what I'm going to do is stop looking at the mountain in front of me. What did David say? Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You're with me. You prepare a place for me. You prepare a table for me. You're you're with me, providing for me, leading me through what I'm going through. Can I encourage you, don't stop in the valley. Look to the end. Don't look to the mountain on the left or the mountain on the right. Keep looking forward and lift up your eyes. That's a word for somebody here this morning. Lift up your eyes. You've been looking down. You've been looking in. You've been looking backwards. Don't look back. Look forward. Dream again. I, I feel like calling people out this one. Dream again. Dream bigger. Dream bold. Dream audacious. You know, it was once said that, that God is most glorified when man is most alive. There's another saying that, that most men die when they're 30 and we bury them when they're 80. Because they stop dreaming. They stop believing. They lose passion. They lose faith. They just exist. You weren't put on this planet just to exist. You were put on this planet to enjoy the goodness of God. You were put on this planet to live blessed, happy, joy-filled, at peace. You'll still walk through challenging times, but God will be with you every step of the way, carrying you, sustaining you, drawing you forward in life. Amen? Amen. And And I wrote this down. What we see with our eyes closed is more important than what we see with them open. Dream. Close your eyes and dream. Think back to those, those promises that God spoke into your life when you were a young child. Think about the things that, that kept you awake at night. Think about the dreams you had for the adventures you'd have and then step out towards them. Don't do life in neutral. There is no neutral ground in the kingdom. There's no neutral ground in the supernatural or in the spirit realm. If we're not moving forward, we're being dragged backwards. But Hebrews said we're not of those that shrink back. Don't shrink back. You've come too far. You're you're here. You're a victor. You're you're, you're winning in life. Don't don't withdraw. Don't hold back. Press forward in God. Because he wants to take you on to new ground and have new adventures. Amen? Amen. I want to pray for people, but I want to bring the word. Anyway. You know, I love when God spoke to Abram. And he says, Abram, I'm changing your name to Abraham. Abraham means father of a multitude or father of many nations. When God said, I'm changing your name from Abram to Abraham, he was childless. Not only was he childless, he was old. There was impossibility. I feel like somebody here right now, you feel like God is calling you on to a new day, to a bigger day, to to a, a fulfilled day, but your circumstance right now don't reflect what God is saying. I want to encourage you, Look up, because God is going to show you a way. He's going to make a way where there doesn't seem to be a way. And he said, Abram, come out here. Come out from your tent, from your place of limitation, from your place of limited vision. You're contained in there. You're limited in there. I want you to come outside and see what I see. If we look forward and we look to Jesus, we start to see what he has for us. 
But when I stay in this place of, of, of fear or doubt or limited vision or I'm going to protect myself, what I've noticed during this time of, of the last few years is people went to self-protection and self-preservation. And I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to get in my little shell. This is me. In a, no, anyway. Austin Powers, let's not go there. God wants to call you out of that tent, that place of limit. And he says, look up to the skies. See, can you see the stars? If you could count the stars, that as many as your descendants will be. If you could count the sand on the seashore, that is what I'm going to do for you. I want to tell somebody here today, what God has for you is unlimited. Man can't stop it. Circumstance can't stop it. The enemy can't take it from you. The scripture says what the enemy meant for evil, God means for good. God wants to do a good thing and a good work in your life. Just receive it. Lift up your eyes to where your help comes from. Don't look down. Don't look back. Don't look inwards. Look to God. Amen. Come on, let's give God a, a mighty hand clap this morning. Romans 8, 28 says this. We know that all things God is working together for good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purposes. God is working all things together for your good. And it may not look good, and it may not feel good, and it may not be what you want, but I'm telling you right now, the season you're walking through is strengthening you. It is making, it is equipping you for what you're going to receive and enter into in the days to come. Isaiah 64, 5 says this, God works for those that wait for him, and he meets with those who rejoice. God works for those that wait for him, one of the struggles in life as a believer is wanting to do and wanting to be and wanting to achieve and wanting to make happen. But God says, if you will wait for me, I will work for you. I will work all things together for your good. I will do what you can't do in yourself. He meets with those who rejoice. Let's flick a switch and go, I'm going to get happy in life. I'm going to enjoy life. I'm going to take whatever glasses I'm looking through at right now of negativity, of, of I, I hate this. I can't believe we, we find ourselves here and go, you know what? All things are working together for good. I'm looking through the lens of faith. I'm looking into a new day. Let's just, if you have to, put the rose-colored glasses on. Just put them on and go, life is fantastic. Because do you know what? Life is fantastic. Life is fantastic. Life is a gift, and we've only got one of them. We've only got one life to live. Let's live it. Let's enjoy it. Let's be passionate. Let's be generous. Let's be big-hearted. Let's be hospitable. Let's be whatever so that the world sees and God gets, gets the glory. Amen? Third thing is this. Step towards the future. Step towards the future. Faith moves. It always moves forward. F faith isn't static. It's active. It does something. Faith takes a hold of God's promises and says, thank you very much, I'll have that. Faith goes, you know what, I will find a way, even though there doesn't seem to be a way. And like I said, we're not of those that shrink back, we're those that move forward. And the, the, the saying is that the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Let that first step be the step of faith. Let the second step be a step of faith. Let the third, third you found yourself here, this, you're here for some reason. It's like God's moving on the inside of you or you're searching and you're desiring and you're wanting more. We all want more in life. And whether it's peace or it's, it's breakthrough or it's we want more. God has more for you. I, I'm, I'm here to tell somebody this morning. God has more for you than what you have right now. And he's thinking towards you and he wants to bless you. And that's what it says. He has plans and purposes that are for your good, not to harm you. God is not this eternal killjoy that wants to harm you. He wants to bless you. You're his kids. You're, you're adopted into the family. And that's an amazing, amazing thing. You know, Proverbs 28 says, The wicked flee, though, that no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as lions. The right, you are the righteousness of Christ. Be bold. Live bold. Live big. Live audacious. Step forward. Don't, don't retreat. The, the world is telling us right now what the church is and what a Christian is and how we should. Rubbish. Live your life. Live victorious. Live rejoicing. Live happy. Just live fully. Don't let the circumstances of today affect tomorrow's realities. Step forward, press back. That's what the Bible says, that, that, that we press back on darkness. 
And, and I don't know about you, but it feels like in the last few years that darkness has tried to, to come in. And there's, there's, there's pressure and there's weight and I have to think through everything I do. What I used to do naturally, now I have to think through. Will this offend somebody? Is this the right thing? Is this legal? Is this, can I do that? Can I encourage you? Let's press back on darkness. There is a right way to live, but God will show us that right way. And, and the word says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard. And I'm telling you, we are living in a day where the Lord is raising up a standard. We are living in a day that says in the last days, the house of the Lord will become chief among the mountains. I tell you, that day is on our doorstep. That, that day is upon us where the church is going to be seen for the great works that it does, for the people that it helps, for the, the breakthrough and the life that it brings to others can I tell you it starts with us revival starts with us every single one of us getting on fire for God and fully living can I encourage you open your mouth lift up your eyes start walking forward and watch what God will do you do for you <laughs> Proverbs 3 says trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. I feel like God's calling us back to this place of trust. And, and, and trust is a hard issue. But the reality of life is everything's a hard issue. Everything is about where do I, what, what do I believe? What will I accept? But what I love about this, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. I usually lean on my understanding because that's what I know. That's what I'm familiar with. That's what I understand. That's what I can comprehend. But the Bible says, trust in your heart. I'm going to speak to your heart. And I feel like this morning, God wants to speak to people's hearts. Yeah. There are people in this room and you've got dreams and desires that haven't come to pass. They're going to come to pass. If he's promised it, the Bible says he's, he's faithful to the promises that he's made. There's people here and you're, you're hurt and you're going to get healed of that hurt as you trust in him. There's people that are sick, and the sickness was taken to the cross, and you're going to receive the healing that you desire as you trust and wait on him. Yeah. And I just think, as I was saying, that every time we enter into this place, we just have an amazing opportunity to let God be God and do what he wants to do in our lives. Amen? So can I encourage us this morning, dream big, believe for more, and get ready for the amazing adventure that awaits. Dream big, believe for more, and get ready for what God wants to do in your life. And everything starts with relationship. Relation, as I said, 29 years ago, this is the 30th year of me walking, I made a decision to ask Christ into my life. Prior to that, I knew religion. I was raised Catholic. My, when I was born, I was Christian from the day I was born because that was the name I was given. But my Catholic confirmed name was Christian Francis Jared Thomas McCudden so I dropped a few of those and but but I did 18 years of, of schooling religious education and I knew about God and I, I, I like Jesus but I only knew about Jesus I didn't know I could know Jesus and then there came a time when I, I went to a different church and and I was invited to ask Jesus into my heart and at that moment, it changed everything. It didn't make everything perfect, but it changed everything. And it set me on a new course. And the last 29 years have been an adventure I could never have dreamt of or believed for, of pain, of victory, of heartache, of overcoming. But I tell you, I wouldn't be the person today if I hadn't have asked Jesus Christ into my life to be my Lord and Saviour. So before I hand back to Pastor Phil, and we are, as I said, going to pray for things after that, could I ask us just to close our eyes all across the auditorium this morning? Is that okay? Yeah. Just while every eye's closed, every head's bowed, just so we respect everybody else in the auditorium, nobody looking around, could I just ask you, have you ever asked Jesus into your life? And if you haven't, I would love to give you an opportunity. I'm not going to call people forward. We're literally just going to say a prayer corporately here this morning that asks Jesus Christ into our lives. And you might have been searching or you might have, you know, what's the meaning of life or I need some breakthrough or I, I need life to look different to what it is. Can I tell you, 
the greatest thing you can ever do is ask Jesus Christ into your life to be your Lord and Savior. The Bible says he's one that will stick closer than a brother. And as I mentioned earlier, it says that he won't leave you nor forsake you. You won't do life on your own. You will know that you are journeying from this day forward with the creator of the universe. If that's you, or if you have known Christ and have kind of wandered from that space, or, and you want to come back into right relationship with Jesus, I want to give you that opportunity as well. So if that's you, nobody's looking around, all eyes are closed, would you just lift your hand just long enough for me to see it and say, Christian, I want to ask Jesus into my life this morning. I want to pray that prayer. I want, to, I want to make him the Lord and say, thank you, sir. Is there anybody else? Just lift your hand this morning and say, yeah, that's me. And like I said, I am far from perfect. I've, I've got a lot of issues, a lot of things that, that God is still working on in my life. But the greatest decision I ever made was to surrender my life to Jesus and say, you know what? I need you. So is there anybody else here this morning? It might be people watching online. And if you are, I'd invite you to raise your hand and pray this prayer also. But church, why don't we just, just look away to God right now and, and I'd, I'd love you, everybody in this room, just to say this prayer with me. Just follow what I said. Jesus, I give you my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father, for sending your Son to die in my place so that I could truly live. I accept salvation today. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to hand back to Pastor Phil and just let him take this service from now. Can we please put our hands together for Pastor Christian to... And we will have that opportunity for people to be prayed for in just a minute. And uh, if you raised your hand today and responded to that opportunity to not just know about Jesus, but come into your own personal relationship with Jesus. Today is the start of uh, an incredible life that Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life to the full. It's not void of hardship, pain or suffering, but he promises to be with you every step of the way and to make your life enriched beyond what you could ever do in your own abilities or talents. And certainly as Christian and I and many of us in this room have experienced, uh, that is certainly the case. And so if you've... Uh, Pray that prayer for the first time. Congratulations. Best decision you could ever make with your life. And welcome again. If, and, and church, can we just, we don't know who they are. We're not asking. But can we just congratulate those people today that maybe prayed that prayer? It's just best thing ever, right? It says that heaven, all of heaven's rejoicing when, when a person accepts Christ like that. And so if you did uh, raise your hand or pray that prayer, we'd love to chat with you. I'm going to make myself available after this service. And would love to let you know where to, what's next, how does this whole thing work for you, and would love to chat with you about that. One of the things, and Christian hasn't asked me to do this, but I know this guy, and um, you know they do a phenomenal job in, in Noosa and the surrounding areas, and minister and serve in many different capacities and ways. And uh, you know, like this guy's not on the big bucks from his church. In fact, he's still on the tools and works on building sites and developments and different things like that to uh, to finance. And one of the things I love about Compass Church, if you don't know this, you will come to know this, uh, is that we we are a generous church, and we punch above our weight. The things that we do for the small church that we are uh, is beyond what a lot of other churches were bigger than us. It's not a competition, but we win anyway. No, it's not a competition. Um, but, you know, this morning I would love, and he has not asked for me to do this, I, I feel strongly to do this, um, is that have an opportunity to bless Pastor Christian and his family in the ministry that they do. And, and by doing so, it's like we're sowing into what's happening up in Noosa and we're partnering as we do with them to see this message, more and more people hearing about what Christian is preaching here and what he does through his life in many different ways. And bless him and his family today. And so you'll, you'll know if, if you're a regular at Compass, uh, we, we do all of our giving through our website or through the Tidely app. The details are on the screen behind me. If you jump on the church website, you click on contact, there's the give button there. Within that, there's that drop down menu that says love offering. If you can click on that one, we'll just know everything that is given will go to Pastor Christian and C3 Noosa just to facilitate that. But before we go any further this morning, I'd love to actually just pray for Christian because he's going to come back and he's going to have a time of ministry. And I'd love for us, if you've been blessed this morning by this guy, would you just join with me in prayer? Or maybe you're, you're thinking about giving right now, but we're just going to just pray for Christian before he uh, serves and blesses us anymore. Father, we just thank you for Christian, Melissa and, and the kids. Lord, thank you that they've heeded the call 
uh, many are called, but many are, many are called, but very few, Father God, step up to the taking that step to sacrifice the way that these guys do and have. And it's a joy, it's a privilege. And Father, this morning, as we just want to sow back in practically, but more importantly, we just pray an increased anointing, just an increased authority, an increased discernment and wisdom, strategies and keys for their church, for their ministry. Father God, as he's poured out over this weekend at youth and leaders yesterday here this morning, we just thank you for him and the great blessing that he and his family are to us. And to restore, press down, shaking together, running over. May they, Father God, just continue to impact so many for the extension of your kingdom, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to hand back to Christian, but before we do that, what we'd love to do is when you come to be prayed for this morning, we just want to make sure that everyone feels safe. As Christian said, you know, not everyone has to fall over any of that. Like for me, I, I know that when I get overwhelmed by the presence of God, I go quiet, which is a miracle in itself, right? But I go really quiet. Uh, I either cry or I just drop to my knees, right? Because I just am very conscious and aware of the the presence of God just in His loving touch, His love just overwhelms me. And you may experience it in that way or another way. We've got a team here that's just going to make sure that, that you're okay in all of that. And they might put a chair behind you just so you know you can sit down if you get to that place. Or maybe you'll be asked just to stand in front of the stage. You might just want to sit on the stage as Pastor Christian is praying for you. But we just want to make sure that when you come out today that you just go, you know what, I can just totally just switch off. And my prayer for us today was that... Um, one thing I love about our church is that we challenge you to be a critical thinker. Not critical, we want you to be a critical thinker. But sometimes our head can get in the way of what God wants to do in our heart because we overthink. You know that song, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, overthink. If you're happy and you know it, overthink. Don't overthink. Right? I'm just saying. Are you with me? Yeah. Church, you know what I'm saying? Because some of us like overthink and, and just, no, just relax. God is good. He's wanting to do good things in us this morning. He's got nothing but good for you. Who wants some good? Who needs some good? There's only five people, Christian, that want good in this room this morning. So this is going to be a really quick prayer time. Um, we've, got a, we've got a God who's got an abundance of blessings stored up in heaven that he wants to release in this room this morning. And if some of you overthink, you're going to miss. I'm not saying stop thinking, but I'm just hearing in this context here this morning. Don't let your head get in the way. In Jesus' name. So I'm going to pass the hand back to Pastor Christian. And uh, whichever way you want to go, mate, with these guys, or just lead in the prayer. Me casa, su casa. Our house is your house, mate. Make yourself at home. Thank you, Lord. Could we just... Um... However you feel comfortable with sitting, standing, eyes closed, eyes open, hands lifted, would you just posture yourself just for a minute? Because as I said before, I truly believe God wants to encounter you afresh this morning. Matthew 5 says, those that hunger and thirst for righteousness will be filled. And I know you don't have to leave here empty this morning. You don't have to leave here feeling like you're running on fumes or that you're, you're pushing it uphill. You can... You can leave here energized and strengthened and, and filled this morning. And I would actually love, if it's all right, Pastor Phil, just to open this altar area up and just say, if you've got pain in your body right now, come forward because I believe God's going to heal you. If you feel like there's, there's areas in your life that you want touched by God, come forward. And I believe God is going to touch you and meet you at your point of need. The amazing thing is this, God never meets us at need, He meets us at faith. And so if you will extend some faith this morning, those things that I called out earlier, the, the eyes, the stomach condition, the kidneys, pain in feet, I believe there's people here with pain in joints and limited movement in it, that God is going to come and, and touch you this morning is because He is the miracle worker. He is the life giver. He's the one that leads us into breakthrough. But can I encourage you right where you're sitting also, you don't have to come forward. God can heal you right where you're at. I love that I prayed for Warren yesterday, but it wasn't as I prayed and it wasn't as he laid on the ground. It was when he sat back in his seat that God touched him right where he was. God wants to touch you wherever you are this morning. In Jesus' name.